Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is on how I made this dripping resin sculpture. It started out as a waste resin which I poured onto a plastic bin bag and then um, draped it over some uh, a vase to create the drips and then I built the subsequent layers um, after which and then it all together so I think there's five layers in all in this plus the base and I also wanted the base to have this sort of dripping effect on here so almost like it's run off the side so yes yeah, so it's, it's quite a, a basic video believe it or not so without further ado let's get into how I created this resin sculpture Okay, so this resin tutorial started off as a bit of waste resin from my last tutorial, which was the hot glue and resin tutorial, which you'll find on my YouTube channel um, and my website. So you can go on there and have a little look at that. So I just mixed it in together, the two colours that I had left over, just mixed them together slightly with a stick. Uh, not too much because I didn't want to blend them too much and I wasn't entirely sure how this was going to look when it was done. I just give it a zap with the heat gun and left it to cure for five hours. So now that's been curing for five hours I then found that glass vase just lying around. I wanted something with a skinny top um, for this, this particular piece. A wine bottle would have done um, but I, like I say I had that glass lying round so what I've done here is I've just laid the bag over the top of the glass and then for the second layer I just grabbed the other layer and just threw that on top with hindsight I should have put another plastic bag between the two and you'll see why now because as I'm trying to debag them I have a great deal of difficulty in getting them apart so with a lot of wrestling and the use of sticks and various things like that I was able to eventually prise them apart but that was not <laughs> without a bit of a fight I can tell you so because it's quite bendy and I was worried also that it was going to rip the resin and the the resin did break in a couple of pieces but because this is going to be a centerpiece it didn't really matter too much and I'm going to add more resin to glue them together but as you can see I, I had <laughs> severe trouble trying to get these apart so for my next layers I actually put another layer of plastic between them so that I could at least get the layers separated and then debag them that way but um, I did eventually get them apart much to my delight because I thought I was going to maybe have to scrap them so you can see there's like quite a lot of pulling and tugging and things to get those apart and that's because the 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 centerpiece was the center bag was glued to both parts of the resin. So there we go, got it apart. Thank God for that. So now that I have my cured piece, I've placed it back on the vase just while I poured some more uh, layers this time I've poured three extra layers so this piece is actually going to be a five layer piece and as you can see I've just placed it on the top because I want to make sure that they fit inside each other perfectly and as I mentioned before I've now placed the other plastic bag on top so I won't move that because it's stuck to the re resin below but it means I can now place the other bags on top and build the layers that way and because I'm placing them on top they will fit perfectly inside each other Okay, that's been curing overnight. We've now debagged um, the resin. It was much easier this time now that I'd put a plastic layer between each one, so that came away quite easy. I'd forgotten to put the video on to show you that being debagged, but I'm pretty sure you've got an idea on how that came about. Now I'm just going to trim off the excess resin drips i didn't want the outer edges to have such long drips because i wanted the main the middle bit to be longer than the outer bit so i'm just going to go around this now and just trim off any excess now you can see that the resin is quite soft so it's quite easy to 
trim that down and um, if you'd leave it too long you can still trim it but it's a lot more difficult so it's not it's best to do it when it's still very bendy and move, movable like it is at the moment So I just fitted that inside just so that I could see how that was shaping before I trimmed the layers, the extra resin off these pieces. Again, like you can see, it's quite soft, um, very, very soft actually, but don't worry about that. You can see how it's all moving. Once we glue them together, they will become quite hard. So again, I placed another piece inside just so that I can see the shape and then I'm just trimming off the excess. So once it's all trimmed, I then place all the pieces together just so that I can get a feel for how it's going to look and um, moving it around, just checking that I'm happy with that. And obviously you can see it's fallen over It's because it doesn't have a base yet. I was toying with the idea of using that base, and ha but it just wasn't working for me. So I then came up with another idea for the base. So before we do that, I was then decided, okay, so we need to now glue the pieces together. I used initially um, an old brush that I'd used for previous resin pieces and the brush is quite hard. So it was proving to be quite difficult to get in between the creases and using a hard resin brush. So you'll see in a minute that I ditched that idea and you just actually go to using my fingers to um, coat the inside and out. Now the reason why I'm coating the inside and out is because I want to give it a nice gloss finish plus once you've coated both sides it they then once they're cured they're actually glued together quite well um, and you can see on here because I put a bag over the top we've got quite interesting effect on both sides of it so on the inside and out we've got like you can see the the shape of the bag which leaves a gives a really nice interesting effect so I just check every now and then that the pieces fit together okay and that's how I want it to look um, and then I just continue with coating all the pieces on both sides with the resin. Now you can see to keep the shape I've just placed the um, layers on top of a plastic cup so that will allow the resin to flow down into the centre and any that's excesses on the bottom will just go into the cup. Now I'm doing it this way because I don't want it to be too solid. If I had done it upside down, the weight would have pulled the, the resin piece closer together, but I wanted to still have that open look. So by placing it in the plastic cup, it keeps its shape more. Um, and you'll see shortly that I'll shape it with my fingers to mold it out a little bit while it's still soft to get the shape that I'm actually after. So you can see I'm just bending this, this the side slightly just so that I can part them and get the, the look that I'm after. But the cup actually keeps it balanced and stops it folding in on itself. Now the excess pieces that I took off, and you can't see on the camera here, I didn't realise that that had gone off slightly, that I'm just coating those in resin and dipping them in the resin cup and I'm placing them in the centre to fill the centre pieces that were there from when it was on the glass so that's just going to fill that piece in so and because the resin's running down into the centre that'll glue those pieces all very nicely together so while that's curing in the garage we now come to make the mould for the base now I'm using a cookie cutter and I'm just hot gluing it to a silicone mat for easy removal and I'm just going to go around just seal those edges so that the resin just escape through the bottom so that's quite quite easy to do and now for the resin this is just the same colours that we used in the main piece. I've just got kept them separate as I did before. I'm just going to very quickly just mix it around with the stick just to mix it up a bit but not too much because we don't want it to 
just be one solid colour. We want to see hints of the two colours in there. So just a quick mix. And then a quick zap with the heat gun to get rid of any air bubbles before placing the resin sculpture in there and leaving it to cure for 12 hours. So it's the next day, this has been curing for 12 hours. I'd realised after I'd poured the resin that I had no way of getting the cookie cutter off because the top part was actually narrower than the bottom. So using a Dremel, which I'd forgotten to film, I've cut into the cookie cutter to split it and now I'm able to remove the cutter. And you can see I've got a little bit of excess resin that was still on the side of the cutter so I'm just going to heat that with a heat gun and just trim that off with a knife. Now I'm not too worried about it being really super tidy or anything at this stage because you'll see shortly that I'm going to just um, sand the edges down with my Dremel tool so just using a little round sander. I wasn't, I didn't really look to see what um, how coarse the sander was because we're actually going to pour another layer on the top but this is just to level things out a little bit so just trimming off the excess as you can see. Yeah, so with the Dremel we're just going to just take the the very outer edge off so it's just rounding that off slightly and like I say I'm not too worried about making sure that's perfect because we are going to pour another layer of resin on the top to create um, a nice neat finish. So we just go all the way around there just making sure that it's all done and there's no excess resin still on the sides. So now that that's all um, tidied up and we've got rid of all the shavings and things from sanding, I'm now taping up the sides for the final layer. Now this is going to be the the dripping layer that runs off and tidies up that edge. So just put that on there all the way around before adding another layer of resin. I'm just using a, um, a squeegee there just to make sure that it's secured to the sculpture and here we go not not easy to pour the resin into that small space so um i just let it flow around a little bit as best i could and use the stick to help move it around the edge and again using the stick just to help build the layer up because i wanted it to be quite thick because i wanted to have quite a thick layer of resin running down the side um, not to be thin and wispy because I want to see the resin drips so here we go it's been left to cure for five hours once again and now removing the tape now sorry it's off camera I would not realized that I'd lifted up quite so high um, but you'll see shortly the, the result of removing the tape so we've got a nice thick layer of resin that's still quite gooey um, and I'm now going to heat that so that it runs down the side a little bit more smoothly so it just helps with that process by just heating it slightly you'll see the resin start to flow down the sides and I want it to run onto the silicone mat because I want the the final piece to have those drips on show so you can see so it's like the water is running down the side after the splash if that makes sense and there you have it there's the final piece well I hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you some inspiration for your own resin sculpture as always the list of items used is found in the 
the description along with some handy links to like the Instagram, Facebook, website, etc, etc. So until next time, happy crafting. See you soon. Goodbye.